Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to do a example of generating differential equations for eh, a moderately interesting RLC circuit, and then play around with it a wee bit using MATLAB Simulink. Okay, so here we go. We have a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. Well, that's your basic RLC part of it. And then let's put another inductor over here and another resistor. Okay, and so these points are all connected. And I'll sneak in a plus minus there and we'll call that V. And let's label this as R1, L1. There's only one capacitor, so I'll just name it C. There's an L2 and an R2. And furthermore, let's say that what we're interested in, in terms of analysis, is the voltage across this resistor, we'll call that V2, and a voltage across this capacitor, let's call it VC. Uh, I think that does it, so let's get started. Um, we'll use KVL, we're going to just sum the, the voltages across all these devices, all these elements. So why don't I put in the little voltage drops across all of them. I guess I have it on that one, so we're done there. And if I look at this loop, and I denote this current as I1, then I have a voltage rise across the source, and I have a voltage drop across R1, and that's R1 I1. And a voltage drop across L1, so that's minus L1 d i1 dt and we have a voltage drop across the capacitor um, I'll just label that as VC and that's equal to zero now let's do this loop and I'll denote that current as I2 so here starting with this capacitor since I'm going in this um, uh, clockwise direction I have a voltage rise across the capacitor VC a voltage drop across L2, so that's minus L2 di2 dt, and a voltage drop across the resistor R2, and so that's R2 i2, and that's equal to zero. And what else do we have? Um, we can also look at this point right here and sum all the currents into it. So, into it and out of it, that is. So if I denote that as IC, then what I have is I1 going into the node, minus I2 leaving the node, minus IC leaving the node, is also equal to zero. Now IC is the current through that capacitor, and we know that that's equal to C dVC dt. So I can rewrite this equation as, oop, this is an I1. So we have an I1 minus I2 minus C dVC dt. And that's equal to zero. I'm actually done. I have um, three elements that will have states associated with them, two inductors and a capacitor, and I have three first order differential equations. So I think I've got it. Um, I can write this in a little bit more organized fashion. Let's see, I don't know if we'll need this, but let's say I call this equations one, two, and three. So if I rewrite equation one, I have L1 di1 dt plus R1 I1 plus VC equals V and then L2 DI2 DT plus R2 I2 uh, minus VC equals zero. And finally I have C VC dot, that's dVC dt, minus I1 plus I2 equals zero. 
Now what I'd like to do to get this into MATLAB and Simulink is to write this in state space form, and I'm pretty much there. My states, my x vector, is going to be i1, i2, and vc. Those are my three states. So now let me go to another page and write this system in this form. x dot equals a x plus bu and an output equation and let's say that I think I mentioned this before that our two outputs let's see are going to be V2 the voltage across the resistor and the other output is going to be VC the voltage drop across the capacitor and our X vector from the previous page is I1 I2 and VC. So if I rewrite those equations from the previous page just a little bit more, I could solve for di1 dt, and that's equal to negative R1 over L1 I1 um, minus 1 over L1 VC plus 1 over L1 V and di2 dt is negative r2 over l2 oops that's an l i2 plus 1 over l2 vc and finally dvc dt is equal to 1 over c i1 minus 1 over C I2. And now we basically do have it in state space form. I just need to figure out exactly what the A, B, and C matrices, A, B, C, and D matrices are. So X dot, I'll hog out some space for my A matrix times X. I have only one input and um, my u is equal to v, or is denoted as v, and so I have negative r1 over l1, 0 in the i2 spot, and negative 1 over l1, and I have a 1 over l1 times v, so that does that equation. 0, negative r2 over l2, and 1 over l2, and zero. That's this equation. And finally, I get one over c, negative one over c, zero, zero for this equation. So I have my a and my b. Now let's do the the c matrix. I'll do that up here. Y is equal to. Let's see. I have two two things here multiplied by x. Let's see, for V2, um, well, V2 is equal to R2 times I2. So this is going to be, um, let's see, let me write this in here. V2 is equal to R2 I2. So I'm going to have 0, R2, and 0. And VC is just my third state, so I get that. In my D matrix, so if I go like that, uh, my D matrix is actually a vector. It's just 0, 0. Neither one of those two outputs have V explicitly in them. So I've got it. My A, B, C, and my D matrix. So I've figured out the differential equations. I've written them into state space form. And um, now we can stick them into Simulink and, and just look at the, uh, what the response is. So let's just take a minute and do that. And I think what I'll do here is I'll just make a little uh, setup file. I'll call it setup.m. Okay. And I'll just define these matrices. Actually, what I'll do, whoops is go R1 is equal to 1, 
R2 is equal to 3 ohms. Um, L1 is equal to 0 0.001. L2 is equal to 0 0.002. And how about C is equal to 0 0.01. Kind of big, but so be it. My A matrix is negative R1 over L1. 0, negative 1 over L1 for the first row. 0, negative R2 over L2, and 1 over L2. 1 over C, negative 1 over C, and 0. My B matrix was, let's see, the B. My B matrix is 1 over L1, 0, 0. Okay, 1 over L1, 0, 0. And my C matrix was 0, R2, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And my D matrix was 0, 0. I could save that. I could run it. So now I have all that good stuff in the workspace. And there it is in the workspace. And now let's fire up Simulink. And we'll say a new model. And under continuous, we'll grab a state space block. Let's make that just a little bit bigger. And put in here a in our initial conditions, how about zero for everything? Zero, zero, zero. And how about, let's see, for the input, for the sources, let's use, how about a pulse generator? And, well, let's do something first here in the, in the workspace. I have my A matrix, it's all kind of stretched out there, or I should say, let me stretch it out a bit. There's the A matrix. Let's look at the eigenvalues of A. Um, so the biggest one is uh, 1.47 to the third. Okay. So we're going to have a fairly fast responding system. And um, so why don't I do this? I'm going to set the period to be 0 0.05 seconds and the pulse width to be 50. And let me put this into a scope. And set up the simulation. Um, I don't need it to run for very long. Uh, 0.2 seconds. And about one e to the negative one e negative six, and for my scope, I don't want to limit the data points because I'm going to have a lot of them. There it is. Okay, so there's the voltage across the. Um, Resistor in yellow and across the capacitor in pink. Now that response is not too interesting. Um, so let's take, whoops, let's take this. And how about we make this smaller, like so. You save that and run it. And now in the workspace, let's look at our eigenvalues of A. Ooh, now they're complex, still very fast system. So we should see something that's a little bit more uh, wiggly. Aha, so now with each um, pulse, we get a little bit of ringing. 
so again the yellow is the voltage across the resistor and the purple is the voltage across the capacitor um, that's really about it beautiful so in summary what we did is created a moderately interesting RLC circuit had a couple different branches in it used our equations for resistors, capacitors, and inductors, and generated differential equations for it. There was three, because there are three elements that have uh, derivatives associated with them. There were two inductors and one capacitor. We ended up with three first-order differential equations that we put into state space form fairly easily, and then created a very quick simulation of it in Simulink, fiddled around with the parameters a little bit so that we could get some interesting ringing, and called it good. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.